Hello everyone, my name is Bridget. It's so good to be here with you today. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to create sacred space in your home and in your life. Now, why is this important? Why do you wanna do it? Because if you're like me, I love ecstasy. <laughs> I love connection with divinity and spaces and energetics that help me remember more of my true self. And one of the things that happens in daily life and in just, you know, metal buildings, 90 degree angles, uh, all the stuff that's going on, it starts to be dense. And so these are uplifting spaces that you can create for yourself that can be a living sanctuary, a temple, a place, a refuge where we can build spiritual momentum to have that wonderful, safe and yummy space to return to at the end of the day or for your spiritual practices and beyond. So it's this living presence that you can be with always. So that's what we're gonna be getting into. If you're new to this channel, thank you so much for being here. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell button, do all the things. Algorithms are crazy now, so now is the time to do that. And also to stay connected with me through everything going on online. I really suggest going down below and getting my free meditation MP3, which also includes right now with this, a free space clearing PDF as well. So there's tons of free goodies. So be sure to go down below, check that out, connect with me and receive these free goodies. So now getting into it. Let's first begin by acknowledging that truly everything is sacred. And really when things become more dense or ugh, not as good of vibrations and stuff, it's because we forget the sacredness and we forget how to cultivate, appreciate, harmonize, purify those spaces, those energies within ourselves. And then they become like, ugh, not so great. To create and cultivate these sacred spaces, it requires a continual cultivation and infusion of energy, of intention, and that's when things really begin to change and shift. Now, the first sacred spaces were nature. They were nature. Before there were temples, before there were churches, it was nature that held the sacred spaces. And that continues to be the case today when there's living presence within the landscape, within the ley lines. I talk a lot about this in my new Gaia TV episode. You can go check out the link down below for that. And these living spaces. And then humans were like, ooh, what if we enhance this? And we build structures that then even amplify this even more. And that became then actual human sacred spaces that were amplified by nature. So this is important to realize because we can always utilize the sacredness of nature and return to wild nature. And that's just easy peasy, really. And we can give to nature and give our presence and then that is returned. And so if you don't have like a sacred space like within your home, you can really just return to nature and that was the first sacred space. Now, when we go into the human cultivated spaces and understanding the context of this is really helpful um, of how others have done it so that we can repeat these wonderful, great things. Because when you go into these sacred places, like I do on my retreats, like for instance, in Ireland, and you go to these sacred places and holy wonder, <laughs> These have been temple prayer spaces for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and you can feel it in the field. But what makes these spaces really special is that one, it's dedicated to something. That's one thing that I don't hear a lot. And when we're talking about creating sacred spaces and it's like, okay, light your sage, call in your angels, hold your crystal, Let's expand beyond that for a moment because in all of these incredible spaces that I've visited throughout my life and as I've created my own spaces, the big thing that changed it for me was actually creating a true purpose and intention for that particular space, that room, even your home, right? Where it's like my home is a place of peace, harmony, and love and consciously infusing that into the space, which means that you are in a space of returning or pouring in those energies, and then that space becomes alive. And when those spaces become alive, that means that these living presences, these benevolent 
um, thought form energies or spiritual beings start to inhabit that space because it's lovely. It's like, hmm, I want to hang out there rather than like earthbound spirits and like weird negative energies. It's like these other things want to come in. But that starts first by creating that purpose and intention in the space. And so normally when you have a certain altar or you have a certain meditation room or in the case of say in Ireland and these other places, a holy well, it has a specific usually saint or spiritual being or virtue quality associated with it that then is it's that place that you go to to pray for that thing to infuse that thing but also to receive that thing that's where that living spiritual presence can be and so this is the first place to begin and as you can see i'm really excited about it um, as i was thinking about this and so There can be a certain spiritual being that carries that energy or that energy itself can be infused into the space. So a quick example of this for what I've done in one of my spaces is we've created this tea room, which has ended up being like our meditation room, our journaling room, where it holds this really powerful spiritual presence. And we kind of stumbled upon this and then I connected the dots which is that this that living tea, uh, the ancient Chinese tea, has virtues to it. And it go back to my virtue video and podcast. They're really, really powerful for this. It has living virtues. And this includes harmony, reverence, purity, uh, tranquility. And so I called in, and we called in, my partner and I, uh, these living qualities in one of the tea ceremonies, and we felt these spirits of, of these virtues come in, and that is then now what this space is dedicated to. And so that's what we're cultivating, that's what we're receiving, that's what we're infusing into the space. So you might have an altar dedicated to love, you know, dedicated to passion and creativity, dedicated to healing, dedicated to whatever it is. And then having particular spiritual beings, in this case, like the tea is a living spiritual presence that's a part of the space, is infusing it into that space where you can call in these particular energies. But that's really the space to begin. And what's really beautiful is that it calls us to a higher level of connection with ourself and with our space. I don't go in there and watch some like conspiratorial YouTube video like on my laptop in that space. It's not for that. And so it sets like this bar, it sets a standard. And when you start to then expand maybe one space in your house to the whole house, you're like, hmm, I can't even bring those other energies into the house. I can't participate in those kinds of negative dialogues or like arguments with other people or be talking in these certain ways it starts to hold a certain presence so you're setting the presence and then all of those good things come and we'll go into that more and then those good things are like kind of holding this standard of like hmm what are you doing this space is for something else and this really elevates life this is where then sacred space becomes life and this was an ongoing dialogue when uh, I lived in Sedona (laughs) of like are people supposed to live in sacred sites and I lived in sacred sites for 11 years straight and it's a serious deal like it really calls you to be in that living prayer as much as freaking possible and when you're not it's just because stuff is coming up that isn't aligned with that to look at so that you can then return to that lived sacred space and so it really calls a lot for us to say like if you were living in a modern day temple space or ashram it's like whoa it's really calling us forward and we can do this in our home spaces too and this really enhances all of life where we are at now i go super deep into this and it ends up being like a i think our discussion of then it's really beautiful into my podcast this is kind of the youtube version of that so if you're wanting even more for me to expand into these other areas be sure to go check it out on my wild and awake podcast down below because this is the shorter abbreviated youtube version but i just want to add in here real quick because it's very very important 
um, before we go into the steps of like, okay, then how do I create this certain space and where do I begin on a very practical level? How do I implement this? Is that this living energy changes a lot. And my teacher, Dan Winter, talks about how um, it can even mitigate, say, electromagnetics or you know, certain metal pollutants or those kinds of things when we have this spirited presence within the home. And I experienced this recently with this family, with one of my friend's families that I was with during their birth process. And the home is full of love. It is full of humor (laughs) and joy. And that literally changes the energetics, but it also changes any detrimental Uh, environmental things, energetic things that are coming into the space as well. And we can live at this standard uh, within our relational dynamics as well. Um, And I know people are challenged with that and sometimes we don't have templates of what that can even look like. So I just want to bring that into this conversation that life can be really good and your home space ideally and your whole life should be this living sanctuary there's going to be times of challenge of course and things come up but when we're returning to this core central space of whatever that is for you you know for me it is harmony for me it is love for me it is joy for my in our partnership in my partnership that's what it is too in my friendships and relationships, that's what it is too. And so we're always reflecting and bringing us back to this space. So now let's get into the specifics. Ah, this is fun. Um, it's nice being here with you. And gosh, I just can't keep these things short. So I hope you're enjoying. Um, so the first place to really begin is to start. To just begin to start. And you can start in a corner of your room, of just a room. You can utilize a whole room if you want. And I think starting small is really important to begin to differentiate what a cultivated space and what a prayerful space, what a sacred space can actually feel like versus not. And a lot of my friends, well, big big eagle outside, um, a lot of my friends they, their whole homes are temple spaces. Um, I've talked about this in other episodes uh, where like I'm talking about sacred altars in my podcast where say like Melanie Beckler or my friend Mara, like their whole place is just popping energetically. Um, but sometimes that can be a, a lot to tend to. And so what can you actually make sustainable <laughs> in yourself? Because that's really where it's beginning and within the physical space where you are. So start with an altar, start with a room, and dedicate that space. So what is then that dedicated space is purpose and quality. Is it dedicated to abundance? Like is it dedicated to love? Is it dedicated to harmony? And then whatever that quality is, are there any spiritual beings that can preside or you can call in surrounding that? certain saints, certain different idols that you can have in that space across, like a Celtic Bridget's cross, you know, like Jesus, what, whatever you want, Quan Yin, you know, um, whatever those certain non-physical energies are and what qualities they carry. I think that's a really important one and to really be, be clear in your mind and energetic and heart presence to whatever that is as you're then interacting with it. And then what is your tending what is your cultivation going to be so if you're creating a garden those plants need to be watered once a day sometimes twice a day if it's hot outside and so what is this altar space that is a living garden or in this living space going to be for you can you visit it once a day you know for a quick prayer for a sitting meditation or can you really just get to it once a week but it does require that maintenance And maintenance is really continuity. It is cultivation. It is where things are continuing to be living and growing versus dying. It's one or the other that's happening. And so what can you commit to of dedicating yourself to it? And it could be going over and just connecting with the intention, lighting a candle, and walking away. It can be that little or it can be a lot and you'll notice the difference. And then in that space, 
really calling in so that invocation of those spiritual energies and if you have crystals connected to it if you have objects connected to it really being attentive to the purification process um, to that cleanliness of it so where it doesn't just become like dusted and you are actually cleansing the crystals and you're actually tending to the objects and and maintaining those spaces so that it doesn't become just like dead Uh, and it stays alive with those spiritual energies and then the last piece is really beginning to notice the discernment of like ooh. When I step into my, for instance, tea meditation room and then I step into the kitchen, it's a different energy. And then sometimes that room spills over into the kitchen, spills over into the other rooms and holds me to that higher standard. And then, you know, what do I want to do with the rest of it as well? So then why we do it is to receive, is to give to it, to infuse, and then to receive, to drink from those energies and let it be a space where that inspiration, where that creativity, where that spiritual energy can come to you more easily, more effortlessly, more quickly for you to return to that space of center within yourself, for you to connect with guidance and inspiration and for you to bring and breathe that back into your life, into your relationships, into everything that you create. So you're giving to it, it's giving to you and that is your sacred space in your life and in your home. So I hope that this has been helpful. I just mentioned like there's a lot of things (laughs) uh, down below that you can go draw upon as resources, including my free gifts below. You can venture with me into different sacred spaces around the world so that you know what those feel like to be able to bring them home into your life and into your heart. And then that there's a bunch of other podcasts and related videos that we can go into this deeper. So be sure to go check out those things down below and call comment below of what space that you maybe already are cultivating and what the energy and purpose is behind it. I, I'd be curious to know, you know, what you got going on there. I know you got great things going on. So I hope that there were some new pieces that you can add to that to enhance your life and spiritual path. So thank you so much for being here. Again, be sure to subscribe and be a part of the community and connect. And I will see you very soon with another one. Sending you lots of love.